I'm not on a charger like Samsung. So why not? Okay. Hey everybody, we're gonna do a very quick dinner tonight. Uh, I wasn't intending to do a cooking vlog today. I'm getting ready for surgery tomorrow, and I know I'm gonna have uh, some time here that I'm not gonna be able to do any vlogging. So guys, this will be the last cooking vlog before my surgery, and probably for a little bit, for a few, at least a few days. Um, now, that being said, I will be posting a shopping on a budget vlog uh, in the next day or so. So, you know, after, while I'm recuperating, I will post that one up. And then that will be the last vlog, actual vlog, other than maybe a few personal vlogs until after my surgery is done and over with. Now what we're doing is I'm slicing up some sweet potatoes. I'm doing fairly thin because sweet potatoes take a little bit longer to cook than regular potatoes. So we want twice as many sweet potatoes as compared to uh, our Yukon Gold potatoes. And what I'm doing, I like to use the Yukon Gold because it ends up giving a creamier texture um, to, the mash, to the mash itself. This mash should turn out being the same color as our um, our uh, superfood here, our um, sweet potato. So uh, this is actually a sweet potato mash that I'm making. It's just my version of it. It's mostly it can be made sweeter. You can you can make it sweeter by adding sugar or honey. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to make this a little bit sweeter tonight. But uh, I like to keep it natural when it comes to the sugars and whatnot that are going into it. So I don't want a huge amount. I don't want to give my kids an OB on sugar right before bedtime. It's, that's never a good thing. Then you can never get them down to sleep. Hi there, munchies. You need to kind of stay off to the side there away from daddy's knife. So again, this is probably the longest part of any vlog is getting ready for the cooking, um, the prep work. But I'm going to say this, tonight's not going to be too bad, guys. Um, this is a very quick meal. I'm in a hurry. I don't really feel like being on my feet. I got told that after midnight, I won't be able to have anything to eat or drink until the next day um, after I get done with surgery. And surgery is not scheduled to be until 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, it's fine and all, but because of my acid reflux, I have a strict diet that I adhere to, and I'll snack throughout the day. So my one major meal is dinner, but I'm snacking off and on throughout the entire day, constantly putting, because I have to eat in smaller amounts in order to avoid the heartburn. Um, so, it ends up giving me problems almost as if I've got hyperglycemia. But I, and I may have hyperglycemia at this point. I don't know. I've been told that, that people have thought I had it. Um, that doesn't mean I've had it. I've never actually been diagnosed with it. So and that being said, okay, our potatoes are cut. Let's do this the right way. We're gonna try to make the like I said. This is gonna fairly quick cook meal tonight. I've got my pan set up over here. I got. Camera's going because we're going to be coming back to the cutting board here momentarily. Um, let's go ahead and get our. This is the pan we're going to use for our beans. So we don't want our beans going. We want to leave the beans off the side. I forgot to pull one out. Um, give me just a moment, I'll find it and then we'll pull it out. I do not see my pan. I see the lid for it. That means 
it must be washed somewhere. I'm just not seeing it. Alright, let's see. There's the lid for it. Hey, guess what? It was put away and I just missed it. Alright, so let's get some hot water in the tap, get some salt going here. We'll get us a we'll get us some salt. We'll start this camera here in just a moment so that we've got a third view, a third eye view here. Um, we'll get salt. I'm not actually gonna start that until something's actually going good. So plenty of salt into about I go probably about four, maybe five tablespoons of salt to half of one of these medium-sized soft or uh, saucepans. Um, we got hot water coming out of the tap now. Swish it around while you're doing this. It helps dissolve the salt faster, and you don't have to stir it uh, with your hands or with a spoon. About half full of water. We're going to pop the sucker on and get it started and going as fast as possible. Okay, that's going. Potatoes are ready. We're going to need for, we're going to do our beans next. Meat comes last. The beans will stay hot. Well, we can do the beans right at the same time. So we're going to prep these both to go at the same time. So we got frozen beans. As you can see, they're cut in small portions. We're going to go ahead and portion out oh, about a cup's worth, maybe a little bit more. I think actually whatever's left in this package will more than likely be plenty. So we're going to just take a look at what we end up with. Yeah, that'll do. That'll feed three of us comfortably. And it's about a cup and a, a little over a cup, maybe a pair or so. These containers hold about a cup. Um, for the beans, we're also doing, we need some onion. And with the onion, we're not planning on taking using the whole onions, so we do, however, want to peel it. Because, now what I'm doing is I'm making little notches in the, in the skin so that when I come over here with my, and peel it back, it strips in to individual sheets like so, like petals of the flower, and then that way, all at one time, it's off, and then we can trim the roots. We don't want to cut that all the way off. We're only going to be using about a quarter of this onion, so we're going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to go ahead and use that whole, that's fine, that's going to be plenty. It's about a quarter of a cup once it's cut, um, which is about what I want. I don't want too much. Too much onion will overpower, but we can have a little bit of waste. I'm not that worried about it. I just went to, like I said, I just went to the grocery store today, so we can have a tiny bit of waste. Now, in my house, it's all about waste not, want not, so do our best not to waste it if we can avoid it. This should be plenty of onion. It should also not be too much. So we're going to go ahead and dice it up, a real, real small dice, so that we get these really quick cook to translucence. And you want to get as close to that core. That's the core. You want to get as close to that core as possible when you cut into it so that you're not having to mess with the core too much. Okay, nice small dice. Here we go. Look at this. That is a pretty small dice. That is nice. This is what we call a small dice, guys. Real small. We can take this stuff off the cutting board real quick. That's a small dice. So, we're going to go ahead and finish dicing with that. Water's not quite up to a boil just yet, but it's getting there. It will be here momentarily. So just be safe. Don't go any closer to that core than you absolutely have to, because you don't want to take off. You don't want to take and add some of the core to your onion here. That's the last thing you want to do. 
We got our onion now. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of garlic uh, to add to that, but we can grab that out of the fridge when we're done here. And then there's one more ingredient for the beans. We're gonna use mushroom. And we're gonna do these in a real nice thin slices. I cut it in half and then slice it real thin so that I get these really pretty. Now those will shrink quite a bit and that's okay. They, they need to shrink in this. He's done with his homework. So here we're not even gonna, we're not gonna, we're just gonna slice it. Watch out, Madeline. Watch your hands off the counter while Daddy's working with the knife, okay? Now there's a number of ways you can cut these to get the effect that you want. You can use a mandolin if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, yeah, I'll just use your imagination, but normally when you see these in a can, they're mint so small you can't identify the mushroom in it. Okay, water's up to a boil. We're gonna start this camera. And hopefully all that's in the picture. Okay, what's going on? Camera didn't start. We're having some technical difficulties here. Low battery. Okay, we won't be using this camera today. Okay, sorry guys, we're not going to have a close-up of the stove. Um, so I'm just going to have to, you know, show you as best I can. Okay, all the potatoes are in the pot at the same time. They're all cut approximately the same size and shape, but they are smaller than one another. Okay, so... I do not use my induction pan on my gas stove top. So this will be for use on these. Now I'm, I'm leaving these on here long enough to bring them back up to a boil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a burner on my stove and that will keep it boiling. There we go. The burner's going, but I only see four little flames coming out of the side of it. There it goes. Alright. The burner's going. What for dinner? In fact, I'll go ahead right now because gas gas just almost as quick as this. We're gonna go ahead and put our beans on. Get them started and then our pork chops will go here so I need to get them dressed real quick dress our pork chops all we need to do is open up our package of pork chops make sure that they're dried off a bit you know those are a little bit slime a little bit wet so let's see I know I had uh, must have run out um, in here. Just bear with me just a second. Had to go grab some paper towels out of storage. All right, a couple of paper, a couple of paper towels, and just. Dab them dry, make sure that they're dry. They'll take the seasoning a lot better. Um, I've got a little recipe I like for the pork chops. We're gonna, I'm gonna teach you guys really quick. It's a simple one. I don't need a whole lot for it. Okay, pork chops, when they dry it off, they become nice and sticky feeling, rather than kind of wet. Slime, nice sticky. So, the salt and pepper adhere to them a whole lot better. 
Okay, the potatoes are back up in a boil. We'll let them boil for about 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes or so. They'll get tender enough. Um, salt and pepper are pork chops. Make sure you put plenty of, you know, a decent amount of salt on those pork chops, guys. The salt gives you that nice browning on them. It also draws a little bit of moisture out and helps it sear a whole lot quicker. Now, if you were going to be putting these away, I wouldn't suggest putting this much salt on them unless you're planning on salt curing them. You'd actually put a whole lot more salt if you're trying to salt cure them. But, you know, you want a nice little coating and then pepper, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of itty bitty bitty bit of pepper. Yeah, nice coating, nice little coating of pepper on them. Normally I would say use cracked black, but I'm using ground black at the moment. There we go, all salted and peppered. Gotta grab our garlic out. Time garlic. Okay, so. We will get our pans going. I see the garlic. Yes, yeah, so in order to get our pans going, we need olive oil. Olive oil in both pans, about two to three tablespoons in each. And then we're going to get our heat going. You can use coconut oil. You can use gar olive oil is used mostly for flavor and it, that is healthy. Um, we're going to put this on medium start. This is going to be on whatever high, not high, but we need to take it out about a medium flame. Get it nice and hot. Um, okay, simple, simple guys. At this point, dinner is, this is all about cooking. So, actually, I'm going to kind of do this. There we go. And we're going to, Madeline, you need to kind of stay out of my shot, okay? So where you're at, you're okay. Um, we're going to go like this. Get you guys a better look at, hopefully a little bit better look at my, so we're going to see if we can actually raise this camera up a bit and get you a little bit better view on that cook. In fact, I've got an awesome idea. I'm going to be a little bit crowded, but we can make it work. We're... We're going to set this one right over here. Excuse me, Madam. Let, let me step up there for just a second. I need you to put that Play-Doh away if you're done playing with it. Well, then you need to put the crayons away. All right, we have pitcher over our stove. Now, this is going to be very interesting because our camera views on our vlog are going to change for a bit. Okay, our olive oil is getting nice and hot on both pans. Okay, with this one, we're going to turn our heat down a little bit more. We're going to go salt, pepper in the pan. Let it sear. You want a nice sear on each side. And I'm going to need room, so we're going to... I'm not really supposed to move them around once you put them in, but it slows, it stops the sear, but we're going to try to make it work here. Okay, we got four in there, that's good. Our beans, our bacon, and onion, all that needs to go in there. So we need to get sort of sells out a piece of bacon or two and chop it up real fast. 
because I forgot this bacon needs to be used. It's very close to being Yeah, it's getting close. It's not quite there yet. It still smells fine. It's just getting losing some of this pink. It will still cook. It will still render. It's still yummy, yummy. But this is about the length of time I'm willing to keep it. It's been about seven days. Once I, I'm just going to end up throwing away the rest of that bacon. There's no point in keeping it. It will go bad before I get cooked again. I wish I could cook it all now and render it, and I might do that a little bit later. So now, I'm going to take a little bit of salt, mix it, mix it in with the bacon, bacon, in. Alright. Now, <clears throat> we'll flip our chops. Yeah, yeah, see that very nice light brown sear on them? That one doesn't have enough of one. So this, the temperature might need to go up on it now. So I brought it down so that it wouldn't burn. Okay. Potatoes should be done. We'll turn them off. We're going to cook, we're going to render our bacon fat off the bacon. We're going to cook our bacon down to um, that, that. I will probably go ahead and render the rest of this tonight before, well, after I do my vlog. Um, and to render it and keep it, you just render it and you get one of these plastic containers. Put the oil and the rendered fat into that. Put your bacon bits separate on a paper towel to drain. Once they're dry, you can put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the refrigerator, keep for another 10 days. Okay, we're gonna go up a little higher on that one. The bacon fat will now, the rendered fat will, the, from that bacon will now allow the olive oil to be heated up a lot higher and handle a lot higher heat. So that's what we want. We can bring our heat up on that. Uh, pork chops got a nice sear on one side. We're going to take some of this parsley, or not parsley, this pine, and we're going to put it in here with our pork chops. You know, just kind of drape a few sprigs on each pork chop. Around like that. And then, um, you know, we're not going for anything special. We let them cook for a few. Bring the temperature back down to just a bit. There we go. I'm not going to do a candy on them or anything like that. I don't want one. I'm not trying to get anything special here. Okay, bacon. You don't want to burn it, but you want it nice and crispy and. Because it will soften again once we put the beans, the water from the beans in there and onion and all that. But at this point, we can go ahead and add our onion. We want to wait on the, we want to go ahead and, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and add it all now. This whole mess, the bacon, the onion, the um, mushroom, all of that can go in right now. This will still brown, it'll still render. This will just all add flavor to it. All the flavors will build and blend. Okay, we need a tiny bit of garlic. Grab us up a spoon. About a clove of garlic. Okay, pork chops are looking good. We want to check them and flip them if necessary. Yeah, and it's turn around, flip them with the herbs now going to the bottom. They'll sear into the into the, into the flavor of the pork chop. They'll add flavor from the rendered fat, chicken broth, and all that. Plenty of fun. Oh, nice smell on this. Oh yeah, beautiful. 
Beautiful. Now, we want to really take this temperature way down. We don't want to overcook the pork chops and they are looking really yummy. Now we're going to bring our temp up on high on this one. Get that cooking, that smells just so awesome. Okay, so I like to use my steamer as a strainer as well. This is the top part of this pot here. Put it over here in the sink. We are going to strain out the liquid from the potatoes. I'll go ahead and put the potatoes right back into the pot that we just pulled them out of. No point in dirty in another dish that we don't need to dirty here. Okay, pot is on the stove. Um, pork chops are still cooking really nicely. They're smelling wonderful over here. Very well seasoned. Beautiful, beautiful smell. Um, it's absolutely aromatic in this house right now. Um, okay, bacon, onion, mushrooms, garlic, oh, what a wonderful smell. Uh, again, another one of those great, these are going to be very aromatic, very flavorful dishes. Okay, at this point, we're going to add our beans right to all that. There's enough water in there that we should be able to deglaze our pan without having to add any more liquid. We really don't want to add liquid. But the beans are nice and cold and that fawn comes right off the bottom of the pan. That fawn was created from cooking that bacon. And there's enough liquid in the, pan, in the beans that when they start to cook, and you just rub it with a spatula and that fawn starts coming off of the pan very nicely. That is, oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, plenty of beans, plenty of meat. Kind of a pork themed dinner here tonight. We don't want to cook these way down, way down, but we want them nice. We want them nice and tender. We want to, you know, let them get that flavoring. And here I always add a little bit of pepper, a little bit of ground black pepper, and a little bit of salt. Don't want to overdo it. But we definitely want them seasoned. The salt, you know, will helps enhance the natural flavors. If you overdo it, then all you taste is the salt. And we don't want to just taste salt. We want to taste the beautiful flavors of the, of the caramelized onion as it cooks. The mushroom, the mushrooms that absorb like a sponge all of this good, yummy bacon flavor, and the onion. And, oh, it's going to be so good. Normally, you would use this recipe on a French style green bean. All right, we're going to finish our pork chops real quick. We got a nice little bit of cook on them. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Look at that awesome color. Letting them sit there, cook a little bit in their own juices on real low, real low heat on top of that. They don't need to have this perfect crispness, guys. To be beautiful, yeah, we like to see that caramelized ring on there, but you know, you're at home. You don't have, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect every time. And sometimes you get that caramelization, and after you do this, that caramelization goes away. We can always bring it back if we increase our heat a little bit. We don't want to overcook it. We just want to take off some of that liquid, but that's okay. We really just want to add flavor, and that's what that's doing. 
This should be about done. You don't want the bacon too crisp. Should be just chewy and it, it really, sh if it got crisp, it should have chew become chewy after doing this. Uh, the crispiness goes away because you're adding moisture to it. Okay, this is done. Pause that. That's done. The only thing left we have to do is assemble our sweet potato mash. A little bit of salt. Leave the pepper out. We don't need it. Um, we need onion away. I grabbed it at the store today. All right. Here we go. Something for a little bit of added flavor, for a little bit of added sweetness without adding sugar. Mm. Oh, that's good. About two to three tablespoons ish of the honey. Don't want to overdo it, but you know, no, it's good. Okay, now we need butter. No salted butter in this case. Because we just added salt, we want to use unsalted butter. Now we don't have a whole lot of added salt, but we don't need to be eating. About three and a quarter tablespoons. Yep. Put this in the butter tray. It's so very good. Same way I make regular mash, only I've done it with the primary ingredient being sweet potato. The, the white, the yellow potatoes to help bond and make the um, and make the sweet potato sweeter. So, yeah, move that to the back corner there. Put that there. We need a mixer. Because I'm not going to use the I'm not going to use the ricer today. I'm being lazy. Yeah, no point in messing that thing up right now. It's a quick dinner. It's just for me and the kids. And here we go. Let's, um, oh, we need to add. We need to add a little bit of milk. Milk. White milk. And then we'll add some heat to help melt that butter down a bit while we're doing this. Just enough heat to get that milk cooking a little bit. Helps melt down the butter. Consistency that you want. this up real fast and then I will let you guys go. You all thank you so much for all of your support guys. You're awesome. You make this worth doing every day. Just seeing that you guys are watching it really makes me feel wonderful. 
Um, I'm glad you all are enjoying it. The one, the one person who gave me a thumbs down, I'm sorry you didn't like it. Should have left me a comment explaining to me what you felt was wrong and I would have absolutely tried to fix it. So if you happen to watch any more of my videos, this one in particular, I hope you give me another shot. You know, send me some information. Let me know what's going on. All right, so I need to actually keep my cutting board out for a moment. We're going to cut up a, pork chop, a couple pork chops real quick for the kids. This one is for my daughter. One, two, three. Now, these pork chops should be a perfect medium. It means you should see a tiny, tiny inkling of pink in the center. These have it. They're awesome, guys. Oh, yeah, delicious flavor on the outside. Okay, right, one for my son. Boy. Oh, it's got a pretty pink inside of it, too. Can I see? I'm going to get it over to the plate. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Check this out. Very pretty pink. Oh, that, there it is. There it is. Right there. It's a little bit too overcooked on this end, but that's okay. It's still nice and moist. A little bit more cooked than I would have liked it, but hey, that's okay. Now, me personally, I will take my pork chops whole so that I don't have to, because I don't have to worry about cutting them. A little bit of these pan dredgings. I want some of There we go. Alright, those are the pan drippings. Now for the beans. The yummy, yummy beans. A very rustic meal. Very little work actually involved. Doesn't take a lot of time to make. Not a huge amount of time to prep. You know, very nice, very colorful. Yeah, we're getting into the fall season, so these are more fall colors. Actually, no, these are more, still more summer colors, I'm sorry. Okay, now we got potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Our sweet potato mash. Now, first thing we should always do is test them. Perfect. Those are delicious. They got the right amount of savory, the right amount of sweet, not too much of either, but just enough of both. I don't look at sweet potato mash as having to be like sugar sweet. It needs to have some savory. It is a potato. It's supposed to be savory. Now, let me make it. Oh, it smells on it. Oh, but delicious. Absolutely delicious. Okay, guys. That's our vlog for tonight.